The federal government may have to come up with sound policies that will ensure that Nigeria earns at least $5 billion in revenue from cassava exports. Now, this challenge is coming from an official of the International Institute for Tropical Agriculture, and he says Nigeria is yet to harness the benefits of cassava in spite of its enormous potential. He, however, calls for concerted efforts by the government to change the situation. Nigeria is said to top the rank in the list of countries with high rates of cassava production of about 20%. But in spite of these feats, only 1% of a total amount produced is exported. This is largely owing to factors like poor mechanization, poor processing and low yields among others. This and more are some of the issues this meeting hopes to resolve. Nigeria produce so much than all the other countries in the world, but Nigeria exports about 1% in terms of global export. So there is need to turn that around. We should be a global leader and we should also be the global exporter. The important role the crop plays as a major contributor to the Nigerian economy. Value addition of cassava can generate jobs and income for youth, women, and investors from, from cassava farmers to all stakers across the value chain. Experts at this meeting preferred solutions on the way forward. One of such is that cassava waste could be channeled into other useful ventures. We recognize the conversion of cassava from a staple feeding commodity to an industrial raw material will be vital contribution for this quest for diversification. As with most other indigenous crops, there's an urgent need to expand the production of the value products, value added products from cassava. This will be a major means of job and wealth creation and for reducing avoidable imports, getting our savings on foreign exchange spending and strengthening our food security. Attaining the $5 billion target from cassava export and consumption, according to these agriculture experts, is a mission that can be achieved. They, however, want governments to provide the needed support if this lofty dream is to be realized. Meanwhile, more than $30 billion in investments to increase production, income and employment for smallholder farmers and local agriculture businesses over the next 10 years has been pledged by African leaders, businesses and major development partners. The commitments were made at the ongoing 6th Annual African Green Revolution Forum held in Nairobi. Our correspondent Ayola Kasim has more. While African agriculture has seen significant progress in the last 10 years, the Seize the Moment campaign is a frank acknowledgement that much more is needed for African countries to achieve inclusive economic development and ultimately realize the sustainable development goals. The campaign is a decisive push for the political, policy and financial commitments essential to transforming Africa's agricultural sector. The goal, a new era of business opportunities for the 70% of the African population that depend on farming for food and income, yet too often face poverty and poor nutrition. The annual loss from post-harvest mishandling and, and the waste that occurs and the loss that occurs exceeds the amount of all the food aid that we bring onto the continent every year. So if we could just eliminate the 40% of loss, we're talking about the ability, again, of Africa to feed itself. And to help boost Africa's green revolution, the Kenyan president decides to lead by example, promising to inject $200 million so at least 150,000 young farmers and young agriculture entrepreneurs can gain access to markets, finance, and insurance. The World Food Program commits to purchasing at least $120 million of its agricultural products each year from smallholder farmers through a partnership called the Patient Procurement Platform. The Rockefeller Foundation ejects $180 million in additional commitment. The International Fund for Agricultural Development will provide over $3 billion to African agriculture over the next six years and $24 billion from the African Development Bank over the next 10 years. In total, more than $30 billion has been pledged in unprecedented commitment to African agriculture. 
But the challenge goes out to all the banks across Africa, Nigeria, South Africa. We want to hear what you are going to do for agriculture. The times are changing and experts say the outlook for African agriculture is positive. But for the full potential to be realized, investors must now see agriculture not just as a development project, but good business. Ayola Kasim reporting for Channels Television News. In view of the current economic recession, the Imo State Government is partnering with the Kebi State Government for Agriculture Development. Governor Rocha Sokoracha disclosed this at an executive meeting at the Government House Imo State, Southeast Nigeria. He said the partnership will give priority to boosting rice production. Delegates from Kebi State Government House are in Oweri, the Imo State capital, meeting with Governor Rocha Sukorocha and members of the Nigeria Labour Congress to deliberate on possibilities of both states working together to enhance rice production in Imo State. Governor Okorocha says the state government is more determined than ever to deploy all machineries to ensure the partnership is sustained for the people's benefit as agriculture is the way forward to feed the people. The representatives from Kebi State, which has a success story in rice production, believe it could also be viable in Imo State, which they believe has the capacity to be one of Africa's largest producers of rice. In that intervention, we started with 70,000 farmers. We are now going to 300,000 farmers. That cover rent and food order of the youth, the elders, and everybody. I'm telling you, if you take a Kebele to come to the East, you tell you no. We have gone and we are thinking to that goal. Your Excellency, what are you doing more? With your political will and determination, I am saying you will pass Kebele in the next one year. If concretized, the proposed partnership is expected to benefit citizens in the face of the country's latest economic challenges. Hello and welcome to Business News. The Lagos State Governor, Mr. Akimumi Ambode, has explained that the 500 billion naira bond program approved by the State House of Assembly is a pool fund that will span over a three to five year period and not just for the current fiscal year. Governor Ambode said that for the current appropriation year, the state can only draw 60 billion naira from the pool. In which you now draw down based on authorization by the House of Assembly. That's in a technical explanation of what has been done. It's not as if the state wants to go and take 500 billion naira. It's just a requirement by SEC, Security and Essay Commission, so that you follow the procedure on a year to year basis. So this year alone, what we are looking for is just 60 billion. And the 60 billion is very clear to continue the aggressive infrastructural development that we're doing in Lagos. And we're saying saying it also that those bonds that we are taking are easily repayable from the internally generated revenue. So all we are just doing is to accelerate development for the future of the prosperity of Lagos for tomorrow. Lagos State Governor Akimumi Ambode. Now, the Naira appreciated against three major currencies at the interbank market today. The local currency traded 308 Naira to the dollar. 419 naira 13 cobble to the pound and 354 naira 99 cobble to the euro. 
But at the parallel market, it was mixed as it strengthened to 423 naira against the dollar. It weakened 0.43 percent to 467 naira to the euro and traded flat at 543 to the pound. Analysts expect the pressure on the naira to ease temporarily at the parallel market ahead of the Edel Kabir celebrations next week. The Nigerian equities market rose further at the close of trade today following a rally in the oil and gas sector after Corn Oil released a positive full year 2015 result and declared a three naira dividend. Let's now join Millicent Wonka for the details. Hello and welcome to the Stock Market Report. For a second day this week, the local equities market posted a positive rally as the All Share Index notched up 0.19% to end the day session at 27,574.09. 242.74 million shares valued at 1.73 billion naira were exchanged by investors in over 3,000 deals. Now, market breadth was also positive as the session recorded 23 gainers versus 11 losers. Con Oil, Vitafirm and Transnational Express were top three gainers. And on the flip side, the top three were Julius Berger, Caverton and Wemmer Bank. The three most actively traded stocks were UBA, Skybank and Appian Holdings. And that's the Stock Market Report. I'm Millicent Walker. Let's go to South Africa now, where growth in two key sectors slowed today, renewing fears that Africa's biggest economy may struggle and to avoid recession and a downgrade of debts by the end of 2016. The country's manufacturing output fell in July after rising by 4.7% in June. Mining output contracted by 5.4% after the second quarter GDP bounced back from a contraction in the first quarter of this year. Global ratings firms Fitch and S&P ratings say the slow growth may trigger a possible downgrade by the end of this year. U.S. and European market closed lower today despite a surge in oil prices as the European Central Bank retained its key interest rate at 0%. On the other hand, African and Asian markets ended mixed today. But let's see the figures.